Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about circular motion, which is an A-level physics topic, and it's part one of two videos on circular motion. So whenever an object travels in a circle, we call that circular motion. But what makes an object move in a circle? Well, Newton's first law states that an object continues to move in a straight line unless a resultant force acts upon it. So uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external resultant force. So we need a resultant force to make something move in a circle. The force always acts inwards towards the center of the circle and it's called the centripetal force. The centripetal force. For example, if we swing a metal ball in a circle, the tension in the rope or in the chain would provide the centripetal force. For the Earth orbiting the Sun, the centripetal force is provided by the, the gravitational pull. And if gravity suddenly turned itself off, the Moon would fly off at a tangent in a straight line. Another thing to note about circular motion is that the object travels with constant speed but changing velocity and this is due to the constantly changing direction. So velocity is a vector quantity and even though the speed, the magnitude is the same, the direction is constantly changing and therefore the velocity is changing and that means that it's accelerating when you have a change in velocity and it's accelerating due to this resultant force. There are some equations we need to be familiar with for speed, acceleration and force in circular motion. So we'll start with speed. So firstly we can calculate angular speed. So this symbol is omega and it's in radians per second. This here is the angle measured in radians and this is time in seconds. Now if this object moves from this position to that position it will have traveled through this angle theta and it would have done it in a time t so by dividing them we get the angular speed and of course for one full rotation of this circle the angle is going to be 2 pi radians and the time taken will be the period of this rotation so these two are both equations that we can use for angular speed secondly we can calculate linear speed at any given instant which is the speed the object would move at if it were released and it would move at that speed at a tangent to the circle. And this is simply speed equals distance over time. So the circumference of this circle is given by 2 pi r and the time is one period, so capital T. So this is simply speed equals distance over time and that will give us the linear speed of the object at any point in time. So now the question is can an object moving in a circle have a different linear speed and angular speed? And the answer is yes. So if we consider two people running around a circular track, so that's one person, this is the next person, and they're running neck and neck in this direction, and they, after 10 seconds they reach this point so these are the two people after 10 seconds their angular speed is the same because they've both traveled an angle theta in time 10 seconds so the angular speed is the same but is their linear speed the same of course not the person in the outer lane has to travel a longer distance than the person in the inner lane and therefore he has to run faster 
So the person in the outer lane will have to run faster than the person in the inner lane because he has a larger, a longer distance that he must travel in order to keep up with the person in the inner lane. So even though they've traveled through the same angle, meaning their angular speed is the same, their linear speed is not the same. And linear speed and angular speed are related by this equation, where r is the radius of the circle. Now on to acceleration. There are two factors that affect acceleration. There's the speed and there's the radius of the circle. The faster the speed, the higher the acceleration because you are changing direction quicker. And also the tighter the circle, the higher the acceleration because the change in direction is larger. So that means if you have a smaller radius, the acceleration will be larger because the change in direction is larger. In fact, the acceleration is given by this equation. Now you don't need to be able to derive this equation for your A-levels, just take it as a given. This is the equation for acceleration, V squared divided by R. So that's the speed squared divided by the radius. And since we already know that V equals R omega, then we can derive this by combining the two equations and substituting for v. Now for the force it's quite simple. It's just a case of applying f equals ma. And if a, as we saw earlier, equals v squared over r, and here's another variant of the equation for acceleration, then we simply substitute for a in f equals ma and we get an equation for f. And again if we use this version of a then we get this when we substitute into f equals ma. So to summarize these equations first of all we have two equations for the angular speed this one and that one and we have an equation for the linear speed and we also have the relationship between the two, linear speed and angular speed. We also have a couple of equations for acceleration. And we also have two equations based on F equals MA for the centripetal force. So we've generated a number of equations by studying circular motion and we need to be able to apply them to particular examples of circular motion. So keep your eyes peeled for part two of the two circular motion videos in which I will go through the three types of circular motion problems that you'll come across in your A-levels and how to solve them. So this was just a quick video going over the theory of circular motion and the main equations. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped. As always, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all in part two, the next video. See you then.